My name is Emily. Welcome to my garden. It's a place where dreams are cultivated. I have a great show planned for you today. All about fairies in tiny little gardens. Come along. Let's go check out your fairy garden. Okay, yeah, this is uh, one of the gardens we just set up. Now this is similar to what I have at home. It's kind of a cold frame idea. Exactly, and this was actually at the nursery, not being used a couple of years ago, and so I asked Eric, the owner, I said, you know, can we put this in a display bed? Last year, this was part of our butterfly house, and oh, so nice. I actually had some caterpillars in there, and I do that too. Oh, you do it too? <laughs> <laughs> so that was, you know, in the butterfly garden, but uh, things shifted at the nursery, and I'm at this section now, and so I still wanted to have that in the garden, and when I knew you were coming and things were going oh, towards the miniature garden. So much trouble for me. Oh no, this, she broke the this was down, set them up again. Oh my god. This gosh. was wonderful. I mean, I've, I had wanted to do a miniature garden here, and so this was great. You know, it's a perfect excuse to finally get it done. So I actually made one of these at home, and I do have one of these at home. And so with this, this is a much larger scale. So you can take many more liberties with this. Right. Than and you're not being judged. This exactly. Is for you. And so this was just a, a lot of fun. You could light it if you wanted to. A train running through this. It and I had incredible. hoped that I could get the owner's father to, to get a railroad going in here. Maybe that's down the road, but for right now, we just started off with the house. And so I needed, again, going back to my focal point. It was not on paper. There was no design whatsoever. I just said, all right, I know I have the house. Let's go out. And so Eric has a lot of property here. This goes way back. I went in the back. I said, I'm going to be gone for a while. And I got my large bins, and that's what happened. So it all started off with my focal point being inside the house there. Okay. Do you see the log there with the, the moss growing on it? I can see that. It's unbelievable. I, I found that piece out back, and I said, this is perfect, and I want a fairy underneath it. This fairy is actually mine at home. Just looks like it's perfect for her to be underneath the log and, and tucked there and sleeping. Focal point is usually the perspective point that you look at something. There may be several focals. If you're walking around a corner, you might see three or four, or you might right. just see it dead on. You started with the main focal point within the larger garden. Exactly. And your second focal point, of course, is within the miniature garden. Mm -hmm. And that's that piece of log. Right. And I saw that one little piece and I said, that's going to be where the fairy's going. Right. I like to be inspired. I and do so too. the next inspiration was while I was walking was this other piece of... Oh my god. That's perfect. So I found that and the gargoyle is actually mine at home. Origin of the gargoyle. You ready? Yeah, I'm a sweat. They used to place them on top of churches. Most of the gargoyles, their mouth is open and it made a gurgling sound, hence the name gargoyle. She How cool is that? that? <laughs> <laughs> right. I never knew that. And you have the little fair in land. Exactly. These are bricks that I, you know, I make at home, and of course I broke this one, but uh, so that's fairy land. And I like your use of the material with the moss and... The moss took an incredibly long time because again, I went way back there and collected the moss and just bin after bin after bin, collecting the moss and then just placing it. These almost look like little stepicles. That's a dianthus over there? Correct, that is a dianthus. Yep. And the other ones are the scotch moss. Oh, this is a that, little yeah. mondo grass. Mondo grass is great. And then, well, it's kind of fading right now because I just transplanted these. Instead of spending a lot of money on, on trees, don't want to. this is actually a sweet fern uh -huh. that I collected up on the hill over there. Nice. And you know, you can see the frame that it, it does really lend itself to looking like a natural tree. So they're just pouting a little right now. Everything works well. The moss, of course, can be gathered like you said. When we do the flower shows, the end of winter, the beginning of spring, is when the flower shows are usually put on. And we're out gathering this stuff. We try to think of it in the fall. I mean, right. I gather leaves in the fall and, and put them in a bag and throw them in the cellar. But there's a lot of prep work that goes involved with this. And the moss 
really is much better if you can gather it before you use it because it's still yeah. green. And that's one of our biggest problems when we were doing the flower show. It was dead winter, and it was a bad winter, if you remember correctly. We had a, what, a couple of feet of snow, and yeah. so I had called Eric, yeah. and typically we're closed during the winter, but I called him, I said, listen, I said, I need some plants. I said, I know this is sounding crazy, I said, but can I come get some plants in, is in the snow? And I said, yeah. <laughs> so I knew where it was at, and I literally had to walk through two feet of snow to get to the spot, but and I knew where the it. spot was, and I don't know if you know the little plant, Leptinella, mm -hmm. it looks like a fern, and right. so I knew that would be perfect for my garden, and I knew where it was over there, and I dug down, chiseled it away, I, I chiseled away, and I got this, this lump of brown dirt and everything, and I was, yeah. I was absolutely thrilled, you know, because I knew I couldn't purchase it at that time, right. and I brought it home, and I babied this thing, I brought it from window to window, and and a lot of the greenhouses now, because of the cost of fuel, have either closed down completely in the winter and started up much later because right. we're trying to hold back. Right. You know, Some of these things just aren't available. They're not available. No one's looking to buy, purchase leptinella in or, the winter. And I have to mention, when we buy perennials or any type of material for a flower show, a perennial that might normally go for $8 is 35 wholesale correct for us to put in an exhibit so you know i i have to say this these flower shows are wonderful and they make us all feel great <laughs> and really i mean that's the, the, the one time of year that we get to see each other but they're they're not a, a really cheap venture really no definitely not so again that's why you know a us. lot of the things were actually made and it actually it was actually more rewarding that way it when is. I made things because I, I knew could do this. Right, exactly. It was empowering and I knew that I could make it. It was fun and it actually got the kids involved too. So it wasn't just right. a right. random thing. You know what? I I feel like I'm really imposing at this point, but I'd like to see the nursery a little bit. Oh, I certainly. Say adieu. This used to be at the other section last year. So this is now the, the annuals and the perennials, the trees and the shrubs. So it's still early on, so we're still getting our things in, and we're in a transition. This is a really large place. It's huge, and it's I see... It's primarily hardscape. If you're not in the business, you may not know what we're talking about. So it's the stone, the pavers, we have mulch, we have an endless supply of... The foundation the of it all. <laughs> exactly. And you have got some great um, stonework done over here. Let's take a walk over okay. here and take a look at it. Then we can show them the materials. So this is actually part of the, the nursery section. We switch things, okay. uh, and now all the displays are forward for all the hardscape, and now the nursery is down at this section. I love the covered bridge that we're standing in front of. This is the opposite side, and it's just so cute. I love this lion, topiary lion that you made last summer, no less. Yeah, although we are really at the beginning of spring. It's still cold today. Look it, at us. We're is. bundled up. I know. And this has been left out all winter long under snow, uh, but you can see how this sedum has actually lasted. I want to thank you for letting me come to the nursery. Thank you. I hope you come back. I definitely will. That being said and done, meet me back at Emily's Garden. I had to show you some little fairies that I made before we ended the show. They really are adorable and a lot of fun to make. All I did was pick up a few little figures and I'll tell you a secret, I got them at the dollar store. Some of these I got just at yard sales. Passing by, you always find little things like this. Decorate them with little flower caps. Your little flower fairies have to be dressed well, don't you know? How cute is that? Fairies are a race of miniature beings said to inhabit magical regions, after all. They can bring good luck or bad. Because they have magic powers, some people fear them and call them the little people or the gentle people, considering it dangerous to speak of them by name for good reason. You see, fairies that are bad-natured are very mischievous, and people consider it safest to beware of them. Fairy stories have changed considerably from those our ancestors believed in. Today, the bad fairy is an exception, and we tend to focus more on fairy godmothers and other good fairies of the like.
The belief in fairy folklore of the ancient Celtic and Nordic worlds was said to respect all life from the tiny insect to the gigantic whale, and in so doing connected the earth with the divine spirit within. They believed energy and healing are gained from the soil along with knowledge and wisdom from the trees. Flower fairies are tiny creatures that live in gardens, grassy meadows, or on the edge of distant marshes. Wherever and whenever a seed sprouts, a flower fairy baby is born. Each and every flower fairy is in charge of looking after their flower or plant, keeping it strong and healthy by making sure it has plenty of sunshine and water to drink, sweeping away dead leaves, and polishing flowers and stems. I have some lovely little flowers here. Just make sure you have plenty of glue sticks on hand, I will tell you that. If you have an aquarium, you probably have some stones hanging around that you can use for a little walkway. Imagination is the only thing that limits you with these little fairy gardens. Wisteria here. Oh, and I have to show you this. It's solar powered. At night, it stands still. I've had it on my windowsill, but this is going in my little fairy garden now. Summer's here, and it's pretty well protected. How about these little glass flowers that are meant for tea lights? Great stepping stones for your garden. Just line them up. I had a great time today. I have to thank Kim and Osborne Nursery for showing me those miniature gardens. They really were great. Hope you can make one in your yard. Don't forget the fairies. That being said and done, we part until we meet again. See you next time here in Emily's Garden. Emily. Welcome to my garden. It's the place where dreams are cultivated. I have a great show planned for you today. It's all about miniature gardens and fairies. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Da, 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 da. I don't have to oh. sing, do I? <laughs> <laughs>